Alright guys, let's admit. Enums can be challenging to understand if the first programming language you learned was JavaScript, because there are no enums in JavaScript. So by the end of this video, you will know everything about enums and how to use them efficiently in your code. Well, let's start with a little backstory to enums. The way you create constant variables in JavaScript, specifically in ES6, is by using the const keyword. And let's call our variable apple price and give it a value of 10. Well, now this apple price variable is a constant with a constant value of 10, which means it shouldn't be changed in the future. The old school way of doing this was just calling the variable with an uppercase name and using the var keyword. And it kind of meant that our variable is a constant and should, shouldn't be touched. Well, luckily nowadays in ES6, we can simply use the const keyword and we're good to go. Well, enums are nothing else but a collection of these constant variables. So the way you declare an enum in TypeScript is simply by using the enum keyword and giving it kind of a name. For example, let's call our enum fruit prices and open the curly brackets. It's very similar to the way you would use interfaces, at least the structure, but obviously they're two different. So let's roll it back and we will declare our two items inside apple price and pitch price that we have above. And we will delete our two variables that we declared before. And now we have our fruit prices enum with two items inside. Well, enums by default have a very interesting characteristic to them. So items inside the enum that don't have a value will have a different default value and we will demonstrate it to you at the moment. Fruit1 is a variable that takes the value from the enum, specifically from apple price, and fruit2 should take a value from pitch price. Well, what do you think is gonna be the value if we try to console log both of them? Console log fruit1, and then console log, basically copy it, paste it, and console log fruit2. Well, to find this out, we will go straight to the terminal. But first of all, make sure that you have TypeScript installed. So to do that, do npm install minus g TypeScript to install it globally. As soon as we have TypeScript, the command called tsc is available to us and we're gonna run index.ts. Now that the ts file is compiled to a JavaScript file, we have a new file popped up. And as you can see, this file actually contains those console logs that we need. So in order to get the values of console logs in the terminal, we need to run it with node. So node index.js. And to make our life easier in the future, we can combine these two commands in the one after another. So tsc index.ts and combine it with node index.js. And now we will get the desired output that we want to see. Well, not too fast. Let's clear it first again. And we're going to run the same chain commands again. And see that two console logs outputted zero and one, which means if you don't give a default value to items inside the enum, they will have values from their indexes. So apple price is the index zero, peach price is index one. And to demonstrate this, let's simply change the value of fruit two to take it from banana price, which is index two. And now let's run it again. And you will see that we get the value from the zero index and two. So apple and banana, which is quite odd if you think about it. What else you can do is simply interrupt this flow by giving a first index a different value, actually any index uh, six, for example, and we're going to create a third variable called that we take from fruit prices. Actually, let's just swap them real quick. So the second one is going to be peach price. And let's for the sake of convenience, add a third console log, and we're going to use root three there. And let's see what we get in the terminal. Well, now our index starts from six, seven, and eight. So as you can see, peach is seven and banana is eight. This is really hard to predict if you are new to enums, but this is the way it works in TypeScript. 
Actually, you can assign any value that you want to these items inside the enum. So for example, let's make it 10, 5, and 2. And let's run the command again. And as you can see, with, with default values, they simply take the values that you gave it. What else you can do here is use a value of a different item inside the same enum. So for example, we can multiply the pitch price by apple price. And we can also create extra functions that we are going to use for computed values for those properties. For example, triple price is going to accept some kind of a price, which is a number and is going to multiply it by three. And now we can wrap the banana price in, with this triple price function like this. And now we obviously expect a different output in the terminal. So we expect Apple price to stay 10, but two other prices to change. So let's run our command again. And as you see, the output is different now. So 10 has the 10, but the pitch price was multiplied by Apple price, so it's 50. And three was multiplied by two, and it's six now. Well, a different thing that you can do with enums is assign different types of values to them. So for example, you can assign a string, you can also assign a, an array. But as you see, TypeScript already starts complaining because this is called a heterogeneous enum, which means it has different types of values. And it's not a good practice. Usually you want an enum to hold only the same types of values. So only strings or only numbers, for example, we renamed them to strings. And let's run our command again. Actually, let's get rid of this function. We don't need it anymore. Now let's run the command. Let's see what the output is. As you see, it's pretty simple. It outputted the strings that we assigned to every type of fruit price. Well, one cool optimization trick that you can do with enums is this. At the moment, if you go to index.js file, which is a compiled version of this TypeScript file, you will see that TypeScript does some magic under the hood. So it creates, it passes an object, it creates properties, assigns values and so on. And it looks kind of bulky. What if we simply add a const in front of the enum? Well, now this enum shouldn't be modified at all in the future. And it means our output in index.js or actually the compiled version is going to be much, much smaller. As you see, it only created three variables that are going to used potentially. So this is a big optimization trick. Well, another thing about enums is that it gets a lot of critique in the JavaScript world or TypeScript world, I would say. Basically, there's a good alternative to enums because enums are not that portable, which means if you have, for example, two projects and first project is in TypeScript and the second one is not, you cannot so easily take the first, uh, the, take the code from the first project and use it in the second one because the second does not use TypeScript. For this, there's an alternative to simply use object, as you can see, and give it as const at the end. So we modified the fruit prices name, we changed the property items to properties. And now we're gonna change the all the references. And let's log it out. And as you expected, it gives us the same exactly the same output. To verify this, let's try to change one of the values of the object. So fruit prices, let's try to change apple price, for example. And as you see, TypeScript already starts complaining that the value should not be changed because it's a read only property. If you learned something today, as always, smash the like button and subscribe for more videos like this one. And I will see you in the next one.